When I got this car, it was a moving natural disaster, destroyed by Texas golf ball sized hails. Dents that smashed out the windshield, smashed out the rear window. There was still broken glass on the inside of the car, buried out in the back of a parking lot, covered in tree sap, covered in bugs, covered in road grime. He said for an extra hundred bucks, he'd have it cleaned up. That's how bad this car was. I bought this car, I took it to seven different auto body shops. Not a one of them would touch it. So for under 1,500 bucks, I was able to turn this car around, make it look like something that wasn't an embarrassment to drive. First thing was cleaning the car up. Here's a little trick the body shops don't want you to know. You bring your car in, maybe it's got tree sap on it, or road grime, or vinyl decals, or window tint, and you need it removed. They bring it into the back of their shop and they use their magic formula to remove it. You know what they're using? Oven cleaner. Mm-hmm. I've got, this car is literally covered in tree sap. I can't scrub it off for nothing. I'm gonna spray it all down. It's a matter of just hosing it off from there. I also have a decal right here. The adhesive, that needs to come off. A little dab of oven cleaner. Boom, take it off, but be warned, be very cautious. If you have window tint that's on the outside of your windows, it's gonna peel that off as well. So don't use it if you need to save anything. So use it with caution. This bad boy is getting a bath, an oven cleaner. After I finally got all of the tree sap off the car and all of the bug goo off the car, it was time to update the grill. I recruited a little bit of help. Dirt Monkey Maniacs, I want to introduce you to my 10 year old son Colton. We have a special project today. This thing needs a ton of work just to dress it up. The inside of this car is absolutely mint, but the outside, what do you think of the outside Colt? Ugly. <laughs> Ugly. Ugly is, is a good word. We're going to be starting a new project and we're going to be doing a bolt-on grill onto this car. Then we're going to change out the hood and we're going to do a lot of other fun stuff. So stay, stay tuned. Uh, let's, get, let's get today's project started, boy. What do you think? <laughs> He's excited. Let's jack the car up. Let's crawl underneath because we've got a bolt-on phantom grill. The car is jacked up into the air. We got it lifted up and we've got to get access to the bottom side of the grill from underneath. The grill is one of the one of the two easy options to dress up the front end of a car and you can do it for pretty cheap. Dad, I think he forgot one more. Yeah, he forgot one more on this side, it won't come out. Over here or okay. I am Yep, no, you're right. We got a couple pop clips that we, I did not quite get out, which is Okay, pop clips are out. Colton's going to be. <laughs> Boy, you're good. <laughs> this grill cost me 150 bucks total. Okay, Colts, the next thing we got to do, since this is a bolt on grill, we got to pull the old Challenger sign off, which is right there. Pull that, that, that pop, pops off pretty easy. I, I had it loosened up, <laughs> I painted it. <laughs> I didn't like it gold. All right, so now we grab that the, the new grill and we dry fit it in place and then I'll go from the back side and secure it. Yep, yep, you got it. All right, is it flush? Perfect. Now, now there's four bolts that hold that in place. I'm gonna go on the back side and get those secured. Bolt on grill, instant transformation of the front end, but the rest of the car still needed work. That's where we take it in to get it rhino lined. If you can't bang the dents out, if you can't find somebody that will remove the dents, instead of doing that, cover them up. I find a shop that will allow me to do a lot of the grunt labor myself. So I get to go in, I'll do all the taping, I'll do the prep work, and the shop will do the, all they'll do is spray the car down. This turned out phenomenal. The results were better than I could have ever imagined. I would have never guessed at how good, not only does the rhino lining cover the hail damage, but how good it looks in general. Now I've seen cars that are rhino lined from top to bottom and it's overpowering. I didn't like that look. So what I opted for in this case was just the rhino line from the top rail up. The hood was gonna get replaced. The roof had to be rhino lined. The posts going up to the roof had to be rhino lined and the trunk lid. 
Everything from that point down didn't have much inhale damage. It has, still has a few dings here and there, but it wasn't overpowering. There's a nice balance with the original color of the car and then the Rhino lining to the point where now I have a hard time getting out of parking lots. I've walked up to the car and had four or five guys standing around just looking at the car start to ask me questions about it. Absolutely love the look of this Rhino lining because it's in balance. The entire vehicle's not Rhino lined. It's just a few select areas. Not only does it cover up the hail damage phenomenally, but it just adds a unique look to the car. Absolutely love this look. Next thing that I did was to balance out the car so it wasn't overpowered with Rhino lining was to put a new hood on and to paint that hood the same color as the rest of the car. I, I went with an Amera hood. Strong, durable, and economical. The Amera hoods make great products. Also a functional Ram Air hood. A lot of the Ram Air hoods are fake. This actually allows cool air to get into the engine compartment and I could hook that hood right up to a cold air intake but I went with the Amer hood because they're strong. They're built to last and I love this hood. It gives it its own unique style but it doesn't break the bank doing it. So tell me about your car projects in the comments down below. Share some of your wisdom. God bless.